Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to talk about Pythagorean theorem today. Uh, I, I'm sure I mentioned it uh, before in one of those lectures, but I would like actually to dedicate the whole lecture today to this particular theorem <clears throat> for, for a few reasons. Well, number one, um, although this is probably the most famous formula in all the development of the science, mathematics, whatever, in the history of the world, um, this is probably the most memorable one. So whoever remember anything about, about uh, mathematics or geometry, they probably remember this formula, which is basically the sum of two squares of uh, uh, lengths or cathedry of uh, right triangle is equal to a square, uh, square of hypotenuse. So that's number one consideration. This is a memorable formula and obviously it deserves certain special attention. Uh, <clears throat> now, another more, I would say, pedagogical consideration is I'm going to present more than one proof of this particular uh, theorem. As a matter of fact, four, four different proofs. And uh, it's like an illustration that the same kind of uh, statement, a truthful statement, can be proven in many different ways. Uh, you start from certain axioms and then you do some log uh, logical conclusions. Um, and uh, inferences, and uh, ultimately you arrive to the statement which you would like to prove. And there are many different ways. From, from, from A to B, uh, there are many ways to go. Um, and it's extremely important to understand that there are many different ways to get to the same destination point. Well, obviously people who drive the cars know about this. But it's true in life or any profession, there are many solutions to the same problems. And uh, somehow we have to deal with this, we have to judge which solution is better. Uh, maybe there is some kind of a price attached to a solution which we would like to minimize and stuff, and, and stuff like this. So it's just an illustration that in mathematics we, we are dealing with the same type of um, very real life problems. Okay. Without further, further ado, let me get to all these uh, proofs. And here they are, one by one. Well, first of all, yes, I did mention the formula, but what I actually mean is this. So you have a right triangle, A, B, and C, or whatever letters you use, are uh, two cathedry, two legs, and the hypotenuse, and the sum of squares of these two is equal to the square of hypotenuse. Um, all right, now, uh, I, yeah, one more, one more consideration. This is part of the more general topic uh, about lengths and areas, and uh, why? Because certainly when we are talking about a square, this is an area of this particular square, which is having uh, this uh, leg as, as a side, and s uh, similarly, B square is the area of this particular uh, square, and C square is the area of that square. So basically what we are talking is, we are talking about the sum of these two areas is equal to the area of the square built on the hypotenuse. All right. <clears throat> so it's about areas. Not only you can approach it algebraically, like really like a formula, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, but also from a pure uh, geometrical standpoint uh, where area is actually um, at play. Okay, number one. Here is what I am suggesting following the original proof uh, which belongs to Pythagoras. Um, now, this is our uh, original right triangle. Now, what Pythagoras suggested is the following. Let's continue this 
by the length a, this by the length b. So this is a plus b, and this is a plus b. And this is the right angle. And then we complete a square. And then we put b here and a, and b and a here. And now we consider this picture. Now, it's very easy to prove that if I have a square of a plus b side, and then I point, I, I choose these points so that this is b and this is a, this is b and this is a, this is b and this is a, and this is b and this is a, then obviously all these four triangles at the corners are congruent to each other uh, by two casualty, for instance, and so they all have exactly the same area. It is also obvious that not only these four uh, sides of this quadrangle in the middle are equal, <coughs> but also these are right angles. Uh, why? Because again, this angle, and this angle, and this angle, and this angle are congruent to each other, so are these. And we know that the sum of these two is equal to 90 degrees, so the sum of these two is equal to 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees in the middle. So this is a square. And actually, what the theorem says that this area is actually C squared. All right. Now, um, what to do next? To do next is uh, to perform the following rearrangement of the squares um, and triangles, actually. So let's consider this triangle, for instance. Top right. And let's move it parallel to itself towards bottom left. What happens? Well, this will be moved to this position, and this will be in this position. Now, these lines obviously are parallel, so that's why this is a rectangle for obvious reasons. Uh, this is the parallelogram, so all sides are equal, etc., etc. So, forget about this particular uh, triangle. We moved it here. Now, let's talk about top left triangle. We move it to the right. So it will take position this will be moved to this, and it will be in this position. So from this point to this to this. So top left will be this triangle. I don't want to put letters at the vertices, just not to overwhelm the, the, the picture. And again, we are just moving parallel shift to the right. So this will take this position, this uh, vertex will go to this, so this is the resulting triangle. And finally, the bottom right triangle, we move upwards, so this will take this position. So, this is the same as this. This is the same as this. Etc. Now, what have we done? We have rearranged triangles, but the components are basically the same. If before the area of this square was equal to a plus b square minus 4 areas of triangle, right? A plus B square minus four triangles. That was the area inside, which is basically a C square, 
right? Now, when we have rearranged the whole thing, we did not really change anything, we just moved uh, these triangles around. So now, what are the areas of these four triangles? It's the same as it used to be. But now, you, 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 you really have to see that this is a two triangles out of those four, and these are two triangles out of those four. Now, this is B times A, and this is B times A, the area of these two triangles. So now I can say that minus 2A times B. So now it's obvious that the area of these four triangles is actually sum of the areas of these two rectangles, each one of them is A times B. Well, which is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared minus 2AB A squared plus B squared. So that's the Pythagorean proof. Well, that's it, no big deal. Now, what's uh, a little bit more complicated, I would say, in my personal view, is that uh, all these movements of triangles, um, quite frankly, I don't think we really needed to do this. We could have calculated the area of triangles just you know, by themselves, but that would be a different proof, right? Anyway, what we will do right now is another proof, um, which, well, basically does just that. So we have exactly the same picture. So this is B, this is A, this is B, A, B, A, B, A, C, 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 and C. And now, instead of moving triangles around, like Pythagorean uh, proof, uh, Pythagoras was a smart guy, but, you know, it's not really necessary to move things around if, if, if you can do it without this type of moving. So again, let's do it a little bit differently. The whole area is equal to a plus b square, right? And it's comprised from the area of the inside square and four areas of triangle. But we know what the area of triangle is. We, hope, we already uh, learned this. It's, it's uh, a times b uh, over 2. Why? Well, obviously, the, the general formula of, of the area of triangle is base times altitude. Now, if this is the base, then this is an altitude, right? In the rectangle, in, in the right triangle, uh, the area is just uh, multiplication of uh, two casualty divided by two, which is equal to exactly the same as before. And if you will compare these things, Obviously, a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to c squared plus 2ab. And obviously, we can do this, and we have the same formula. I think it's a little bit easier just because we don't have to move things around, etc. Um, but this proof doesn't have any name attached to it. Um, all right. Now we will proceed to Euclid. Okay, Euclid is the famous guy in geometry who proved a lot of different theorems, and for whatever reason, he has a more, I would say, I think it's the most complicated proof uh, of this theorem. So uh, I put a little um, drawing here, but I will do it right now in a more Uh, in a bigger environment. Okay. So this is doesn't look like a square, right? Let's reduce the size. Okay, that will be better.
So now we will do it more geometrically, so to speak. Because probably the purpose, uh, Euclid's purpose, was to do it without kind of algebra, which we kind of used, right? All right, so now he would like to geometrically prove that the sum of these two areas is equal to this area. All right, how can it be done? Here is what he has suggested. Let's draw uh, an altitude towards hypotenuse. Now, what uh, Euclid suggested is the following. This area is equal to this piece, and this area is equal to this piece. So if he uh, proved that, and if we will actually prove after him this, that would actually mean that the sum of these two is the same as sum of these two, which is the entire square uh, built on hypotenuse. All right, now, instead of proving that the whole square is equal to this, uh, the area of this square is equal to area of this rectangle, um, I suggest to use the following. I will use half of this square, which is this triangle. And I will prove that its area is equal to half of this rectangle, which is this triangle. And, <coughs> and to do that, I will do the following. Let me use another color. Let's connect this to this, and this to this. Complicated, right? It is kind of complicated. Now consider a triangle. Actually, I do need letters now. Let's have this C, A, B, um, A, B, C. Okay, A, B, C. Now, B, E, F, G, H, I. What else? M. Right? Now, let's consider two triangles uh, congruence of which I'm going to use. ABF, you see this one? ABF, and EBC, this one. They look the same, right? And actually, it's very easy to prove that they, that, that they are congruent. Look at this. If you will turn this triangle, this triangle, by 90 degrees, let me do it from this way, this triangle from 90 degrees into this position, right? What happens? Point A will go to E, because this is 90 degrees, this is square, and A, B, and B, E are of equal lengths, right? So that's why A goes to E, and if, if I turn this triangle by 90 degrees. Now, since this, is perpendicular and equal to this, then the F will go to C. So when I turn around the point B, the A, B, F would take position E, B, C. So these triangles are congruent. We basically kind of decided this, uh, not even based on theorems, which we can definitely uh, do based on theorems, but we also did it by direct uh, uh, transformation. One of the transformation is rotation, right? Right. <coughs> well, obviously, it can be proven by this uh, uh, side is equal to this one, this is equal to this, and the angle is 90 plus this degree, and, and this is also 90 plus this degree. Uh, have this uh, remodeling behind the door. Sorry about that. All right, so let's disregard that. So these triangles are congruent. That's, that's obvious, right? Now, uh, well, they are congruent, and that's why their area is obviously the same. But now, let's think about this way. Half of this uh, square, which is uh, B, F, 
C, B, F, C. This triangle has exactly the same area as A, B, F, Y, because they have the same base, right? And the same altitude, which is G, F. It's a perpendicular to this, and these are parallel lines, right? So from A to this uh, B, F, the perpendicular will have exactly the same length as, as F, G. So the altitude of B, F, C, which is B, C, basically, is exactly the same as the altitude of A, B, F, which is the distance from A to this line. So the same base, this triangle, and this triangle the same base and the same altitude, which is distance between these two parallel lines. So the areas are, are the same. Now, let's talk on this side. Uh, this triangle, which is half of this rectangle, this triangle, has exactly the same area as this big C, uh, C, E, B. Why? Because again, they share the same base, and the altitude is the distance between these two parallel lines. C, E, B and M, E, B have the same base and the same altitude, which is distance between these parallel lines. So they have the same area. So what happens is triangle area of triangle B, C, uh, F is equal to ABF, area of triangle ABF. Now, ABF is congruent to CEB. That's why the area is equal to triangle uh, ECB, which is in turn equal to the area of uh, triangle MEB. So we have proven purely geometrically that half of this square area is equal to half of this rectangle area. So the whole square obviously is equal to this particular uh, rectangle. Now, I'm not going to do it, but I do encourage you to prove in exactly the same fashion that this particular square has exactly the same area as this Rectangle. It's exactly analogous. You just have to, you know, switch lines around. But it's exactly analogous, and that concludes the proof uh, Euclid, by Euclid that the sum of these two areas is equal to the area built on hypotenuse. Sum of two squares, area, of, sum of two er, areas of squares built on catete is equal to a, 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 an area of a square built on hypotenuse. <laughs> Yeah, um, anyway, uh, that's the Euclid. He insisted on purely geometrical proof of this particular problem. Well, and he did it. Okay, so let me wipe it out. And we still have one last proof, which again has no name, but uh, much simpler than anything else, quite frankly. So this Euclid. Um, Euclid's pr pr proof is, I, I would say it's rather complicated, although I agree that it has absolutely no algebra in it, it's pure geometry, which is, you know, makes sense. Now, let's not afraid to use some algebraic methods, and I'm going to introduce something which is, I would say, one of the most simple cases Okay, this is our right triangle. This is the right angle. Uh, and uh, so let's basically uh, consider a very simple fact that the big triangle and both smaller triangles, this is an altitude, by the way, which is uh, dividing the hypotenuse into uh, segments X and Y. So these are all uh, similar triangles. Now, similarity is obvious because angles are 
the same. So this angle is equal to this one, and this one, and sorry, let me just do it cleaner. Okay. So we have proven many times that this angle is uh, congruent to this one. Um, well, primarily because these two lines are correspondingly perpendicular to these lines. This perpendicular to this, this perpendicular to this, so angles with mutually uh, perpendicular uh, legs are uh, congruent. So, uh, these angles are correspondingly equal to each other, and that's why all these triangles, the big one and the two small ones, have their all right right triangles and they all have exactly the same uh, angles that's why they're all congruent so let's just write this congruency uh, as the proportionality of the sides right now the small one uh, is congruent to uh, let's say the big one right so x is a smaller uh, catetus of the smaller triangle uh, relates to a hypotenuse as a smaller catetus of the big triangle, which is A, which lies against the same angle. X against this double R angle and, and in a small triangle, and, and A in the big triangle is also against the same angle, is uh, related to hypotenuse. Right? Now, similarly, this triangle is also similar to the big one. So, its uh, angle, which lies uh, across the single arced angle, which is Y, is related to uh, its hypotenuse, B, as the angle. As, as, as the catheters which lies in the big triangle against the same angle, which is B. Uh, towards uh, its hypotenuse. Right? So, x squared, sorry. So, x is equal to a squared over c, y is equal to b squared over c. Right? That's what we can conclude from these guys from the proportionality. X times C is equal to A squared, so X is equal to A squared over C. Y times C is equal to B squared, so Y is equal to B squared over C. And we know, we, we, we know also this, right? X plus Y is equal to C. So that's why A squared over C plus B squared over C is equal to C. Well, multiply by C everything, and you will see A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Same uh, equation. So, again, the purpose of my lecture was to introduce many different proofs, not every... Well, you know what? That, there are probably dozens, if not hundreds, of different proofs of the same uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, my, my purpose was to, to present to some historical important, like the one which belongs to Pythagoras and the one which belongs to Euclid. And also, uh, what's important was that some of them are, are, are algebraic and some of them are geometry-based, and some of them are a mixture of, of, of both of those guys. So, different proofs, they always exist, no matter what kind of a problem you decide. I'm sure there are many different solutions. So, be open to this. Uh, the whole course of mathematics which I'm trying to, to present to you is about creativity and developing of your creativity. Now, if you will be able to come up with yet another proof, um, I, yeah, not, not come up by looking at Google or anything like that, but, but, but just think about it yourself. If you can, send it to me. I'll mention it in one of the, in one of the lectures. Um, all right, so that's it for today. I do recommend you to go to notes to this lecture on unizor.com and uh, try to just go through these uh, proofs again. I think it's very educational. 
Uh, and obviously, as usually, I encourage um, parents and supervisors to become uh, registered uh, parents and supervisors and uh, enroll your um, students into classes, into courses, so they can take exam and uh, basically be a little bit more active in the whole educational process. Um, it's supposed to be like a big course with, with exams, etc., to bring up your analytical thinking, your creativity, etc. Thanks very much. That's it for today.